Hello, and welcome to an arguably problematic episode <laughs> of We Only Look Thin. I am one of your hosts, Donald Weigel, and I have lost about 100 pounds and kept it off for about five years, and uh, we are here to talk about it, and with me, as always, is... Catherine Weigel, wife, uh, I was going to, I don't know, debutante? That doesn't, I'm not a debutante. <laughs> Ingenue. <laughs> Ingen- I'm not that either. I'm Catherine Weigel. Yeah. I am your co-host. I have lost over 100 pounds. I am a tiny habit certified coach and a Thrive certified coach. Yeah, you are. And I love being cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So- it is that time of year, if you're listening to this when it comes out. I know podcasts are uh, evergreen, especially this podcast is evergreen. But um, if you're listening to it when it comes out, uh, it is showtime, everyone. Like, the, the big like show. The big show. Like uh, the, the actual Christmas holidays are next week. Even if you are not somebody who celebrates Christmas, uh, have no interest in Christmas, you probably can't avoid it, at least in, uh, in the U.S. of A., and uh, you will probably get invited to a holiday gathering. And as you know, many holiday gatherings include indulgences that are hard to resist. Oh, yeah. Including eggnog and Dean Martin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like I said that I said that like I didn't realize there were indulgences at holiday gatherings when in reality, it's always the first thing yeah, I that's think the of. Only it's like, reason. I, I, you know, if anybody asked me to do anything, the very first thing I think is, okay, is this a food opportunity for me? Yeah, like, what can, can I bring? I, What's going to be there? Can I, what am I going to eat? Am I going to be able to eat what I want? And uh, uh, the answer is usually I should not. But the, <laughs> but the other side of that is that there have been times in my life when I have avoided parties altogether oh, yeah. because I just didn't want to be tempted. So even yeah. if there were people there that I loved, I would abstain altogether because I couldn't – I didn't feel like I could fight that urge for Nog or Dean Martin. Yeah. And and in terms of Dean Martin and <laughs> and what makes this episode problematic, or potentially arguably problematic, um, that song "Baby It's Cold Outside," and um, you know, to me, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. I might get a lot of angry. We're Gen X. Like, I I feel like it, it's just playful, and you know, and both of them are sort of in on the situation. But essentially, it's like. You know, the woman in the song is saying that she wants go to go home. home, and Dean Martin is trying to convince her to stay. She really would like to stay with Dean Martin, she because does. who among us, Donald, would you like to stay with Dean Martin? I would like to stay with Dean Martin. Who wouldn't want to stay with Dean Martin, really? I mean, <laughs> like, be what? part of the Rat Pack. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, what would be better than that? <laughs> Can't think of a thing. Anyway, in the song, it goes back and forth about, should I stay, should I go? But that's also a song by The Clash? Yeah, should okay. I stay or should I go now? <laughs> yes, exactly. Because if I stay, there will be trouble, but yep. if I go, it will be double. Exactly. And that's kind of uh, true of holiday parties as well. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. But a lot of times we put ourselves in a situation where we feel sort of blown by the wind when making decisions at the holidays and we fall victim to other people trying to pressure us into making food and alcohol choices that we sort of don't take responsibility for, we sort of don't want to, we sort of do want to, and we're telling you, to make a choice, make, everybody. Make a choice. And, you know, the situation is very much like the song where somebody will offer you a drink yep. and you'll say, no, no, thank you. And they'll say, come on, come on. <laughs> that's exactly what uh, Dean Martin that, sounded that's like. That's how Dean Martin sounds in that song. Come yeah, on, uh, come I mean, on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just have one more. Come on, it's the holidays. Like, you know, do that. And so we are going to try and give you some advice some actionable uh, tips on how to deal with these food and drink pushers during the holidays and i want to say up front that i'm not always great at this and some of these things are a lot easier said than done because you know there are family dynamics there are friendship dynamics like you may have you know a sister-in-law brother-in-law who is the food pusher and if you if you upset them or they're easily upset you know it can cause family drama um or you know you've got an older relative who is very easily hurt by this or a younger relative who is very easily hurt it it can cause problems but you know the number one 
best way to deal with this and probably the hardest is to stand up for yourself because whoa you're coming in hot i know i know i've never done that before what makes <laughs> you think i can do that now you actually say what you want and what you need and sometimes you might be surprised people will respect that and they will back off if you actually you know if you don't give them any room to come in with a oh no i shouldn't you know if you just say i'm not going to eat that right now it's not on my health and fitness plan. And, you know, you may be surprised that people will respect that and back off. I would never say it's not on my health and fitness plan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, part of that might be is, you know, another way to do it is to really open up. If this is somebody that you can actually have a conversation with is to open up about what you're doing and yeah. why you're doing it. And why it is important to you to not have that second piece of pie or or to take that other drink or whatever. And, and really explain what you're doing and what your long-term goals are and what you're trying to accomplish. And I know that sounds like really festive, great holiday uh, topics. But, you know, look, I'm 52 years old. If I can't tell people what I want and what I need at this age, I'm never going to be able to do it. And chances are, if you're listening to this, you are an adult. And if you're, whether you're younger than me or older than me, if you can start, you know, saying what you actually need and what you want before your your fifties, that, that <laughs> be better than us. Be better what. than us. If if you can, you know, and if you're older than us, you know, if not now, when? Like, are you ever going to be able to do it if you don't do it right now? And you know, really, kind of. Sometimes people just want to be included in the discussion. They don't want it to be a mystery. They don't want to be insulted by, oh, well, you know, it, he didn't like it because he's not taking another piece. If you if you can explain what your what your situation is, they may open up and, and be amenable to it. Well, and two, that directness, it can make something weird for a minute when people are used to you being wishy-washy, but a lot of that like assertive communication that's also short and direct yeah like it doesn't do that like baby it's cold outside three minute <laughs> right, long like back right. and forth volley right it's like you know what i'm i'm not hungry or i'm stuffed i mean we're going to talk about being full later yeah but just being like you know what that's not really on my plan right now that's that's not what i you know i, I don't love it it's not my favorite i'm trying to stick to my favorites this year and getting it over with quickly rather than hemming and hawing because so often we really want something, but we want to act like we don't want it. And that's what people are used to, that back and forth, like just a sliver, just to whatever. You can just yeah. say like, you know what, I'm not going to have any thanks. And then be done with it and change the conversation. That's what business people do. They don't like spend 30 minutes leading up to what they want. They say what they want and then they provide backup if they want. <laughs> yeah. No, this not... is this is how, why I will never be a business person. A business in, person. In, yes, I am Donnie Business. <laughs> off to do business right no, now. No, but like... If, no, no, it's true. I get it. If you lead with the headline, then everybody knows what the next thing is going to be. If you, if you start with a wishy-washy maybe, then there's room for possibility. Yeah. That's all and, I'm saying. And one thing to keep in mind is with dealing with people's feelings... One thing to remember is when you say no to something, oftentimes the reason people get upset is because you're making them feel guilty about not saying no to the yeah. same thing or not wanting to say no. And it, it can really awaken, you know, guilt and shame in others. And so keep that in mind and try and understand that and be be kind to others about about the way that they're feeling because they may react in a, in a negative way towards you because you're making them feel bad about themselves. Well, and part of the, the flip side of that is I used to do a whole lot of secret eating because oh, yeah. I didn't want people to see me eating because I felt oh, like goodness, I was yes. being judged by I them. I did so much of that. Or because they would actually say something about the volume of food that I was eating. So the more we can be assertive about what we want, the more room it gives others to be who they are. Because like, what if you found out that the entire family was like secret eating in other places? Yeah. Like, if your, you know, great grandma was in the background, you know, like secret eating a, I don't know, what a, what a people that a Mars bar. Were there's candies? Were there's, <laughs> candies. there's originals? <laughs> <laughs> grandma is secretly eating a Necco bag of, of Were there's originals or or bugles? <laughs> oh my gosh, our daughter eats 
old timey oh candy. My, yeah, she, she has she has old timey taste for I sure. I brought her a Tootsie Roll the other day, and she was delighted. Oh so my goodness! It, yeah, it doesn't take much, so that's maybe sad, but absolutely. But you know, another uh, you know, I I was going to uh, I hadn't planned on saying this, but I can't tell you how many times I would go to a holiday gathering, and I would I would actually you know say no, say no. And not eat anything because I didn't want to feel the shame of eating that in front of people, like you said. And then I would go home and just eat as many calories, but not enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just, you know, sad by myself eating alone and stuffing myself. And so please, please also don't do that. Um, it would be better to, you know, to eat what you want in front of other people than to secretly go home and uh, and eat it all behind a door. But as we talked about on the last episode, too, what would a reasonable person eat in a situation like this? Right. Are you going there? Is Is four plates of food a reasonable amount of food? Right. Or are you going there to enjoy yourself and eat in a way that is res- like that you will be proud of the next day? If well, you ask 30 year old me, <laughs> that would four plates would be a reasonable amount. <laughs> Donnie four plates. Donnie four plates. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, but another thing to do is to give compliments to others about their food or say you've already had a bite. Ask for the recipe. They don't need to know all your business. Yeah. And a lot of times what food pushers really want is they just want to be complimented about the food. They want to be appreciated for having spent the time. They they want people to, to have the food that they've spent their time and energy on. And they want people to love it and yeah. to tell them that they love it. So cut through the part, cut past the part where you're actually eating all the food and just give lots of compliments about everything. Oh my goodness, the the green bean salad was so wonderful. You've got a <laughs> vendetta against green bean. I don't know. <laughs> I know casserole, not casserole, green bean salad. Yeah, green bean casserole. Um, you know, but what whatever it is, I don't know. It was the first thing I could think of. Like it just seems like that shows up at every potluck that you go to yeah. is uh, green bean casserole. But really, really give compliments. And then another thing that you can do is when it's possible is to try and collaborate ahead of time on whatever food is going to be there. Actually, you know, if it's a situation where somebody else is doing all of the cooking, you can make specific requests of things that will fit into your plan or offer to bring something or a couple of some things that fit into your plan so that you'll have things there that you can eat comfortably without having to be, you know, to worry about all of this. Yeah, and then another thing that you can do, which uh, Don- Donald came up with all of the things, I'm just his hop on <laughs> Cassidy on this one. That's right. Is uh, take small amounts of everything. If when in doubt and you know that everyone's going to be offended if you don't take a little bit, just take a little bit of everything. And actually that... Uh, Amuse bouche. Uh, yeah. that, that taking that means a amused mouth. Amused, I think. <laughs> amused bouche is what it means. Yeah. Um, is to just take a little bit, have a little taste, and get get that get that flavor just rainbow around your mouth. And, and then you enjoy can it. honestly compliment everything. Well, assuming it's good, you can honestly compliment everything. And if you're asked, hey, did you try the blank thing? Then you can honestly say, yes, I had some and and genuinely mean it and move on. I like how at the beginning of this, I was all about like, you know what the best policy is, is being honest about it. And now we're and like, now but it's if all you like, can't. but you know, if you can't be honest, like, let's tell lots of lies to make people feel better. Ooh, another one I hadn't thought of Ooh. was bake yourself one and make it out of clay yeah <laughs> a a hollowed out calzone oh yeah put it on half of your plate yeah and then hide all of the food <laughs> inside of it <laughs> so that you don't have to eat so it. it's sort of the trojan calzone <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah so. like first get killed <laughs> right <laughs> have any skills at all uh, make sure you use a, a glaze that is uh, food safe, uh, so it doesn't hurt other people. And then you have to you have to bring you have to pre bring a doggy bag so that you can sneak the Trojan calzone <laughs> back out of the party. And then say that they're all <laughs> gone. Yeah. They're all gone. Everybody already got them. Yeah, no. Oh, the last sorry. The, the calzones were so popular. <laughs> like, and I, I got the last on it. one. <laughs> See, no. Which which is better? Okay, everybody. Which is better? Yeah. The calzone uh, ruse, right? The, the Trojan the, calzone, the, the Trojan ruse. calzone, 
or just saying I'm not hungry. Right. Like what is in in the Occam's razor of life? Which is better? I know which one I prefer. <laughs> The, <laughs> the, the Trojan calzone, yeah, for See sure. How long it I takes mean, it's so it's so elaborate. I, well, I you really can have a little, a little shoot out of the other end, yeah, that like goes in your back pocket to hide food. Also, <laughs> I, I I like all of it. Um, maybe like maybe you could, you could line <laughs> line a fanny pack with <laughs> with cling wrap and then <laughs> slip the food inside there. <laughs> yeah. And then sneak it out that way. Okay, but we have actual real things to say. <laughs> well, well, what's funny is that the next thing that I have on my list here is to to take a bunch of food, but then don't actually eat it. Like, well, but the brilliant part was food that you don't want. Yeah. Oh, well, no, that was the next thing. Oh. Um, uh, what I was talking about was first is to actually to take the food, but then be sneaky and like throw it away or just okay. sort of push it around your plate, make it look like you've eaten it. And then, like an angsty teen. And like an angsty teen. Oh, my goodness. We have such an angsty teen. Oh, my gosh. There was so much food pushing. That was like the food pushing around the plate instead of. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But um, one thing, my, my next suggestion on here was to take things, take a lot of things that you don't actually want to eat so that you're not tempted so that you don't put all of this food on your plate. And then you, you, you know, you don't eat it because it's not something you actually want to eat. Or, you know, you just take small, a couple of small bites or whatever. And, and then you sneakily put it in your Trojan calzone <laughs> <laughs> and move on. We've got one Trojan calzone. No, but I like, I actually really like that idea of like, I am, there are certain kinds of foods that I'm really not interested in. If I fill my plate, and it's not even like I would mindlessly eat them. Right. Like, I would fill my plate half full of gummy bears, you know, as you do at a Christmas dinner. <laughs> Right, the <laughs> traditional bowl of gummy bears, like with a ladle, like a they ladle have a ladle to bears. serve the gummy bears. Or maybe bears. just yeah. one of those five pound gummy bears, just put that on my plate. Yeah. But yeah, no, I actually really like <laughs> a that. A single five pound gummy bear. <laughs> yeah, like, I like subtlety. I'm, I'm taking this. <laughs> but that was meant for I'm the whole party. To... <laughs> We're going to have the gummy bear carving later. <laughs> it's like a Yule log. Uncle, Uncle Jim is, is the gummy bear carver. It's like his special thing. Yule no, bear. I am taking it. I'm taking the whole Yule gummy bear to myself, and I'm moving on. All right. I think we've completely <laughs> come off the rails. But, um, okay, another thing to do is to, to volunteer to be the person who drives so that when you are offered more alcohol, you have the legitimate, actually responsible, legal obligation to refuse that extra drink. Um, and failing that, you can pretend that you drove so that you can use that <laughs> as an excuse. <laughs> you came in a Trojan horse. I came in a Trojan horse. You were, you were pulled there. And then another, another, possible thing to do is to really take a long time to eat so that you're you still have a lot on your plate and so you're not being offered more if you eat really really slowly eventually others will pass you by and they will stop offering you more food because you still have more food to go on your plate Exactly. That's a good one. And also, too, I know that there are suggestions about filling your own plate with food instead of having it filled for you. Um, so as much as you can do that as possible is also a good thing. And then try and memorize a few phrases going these are really good. to Donald, the party. Donald Jr. Um, Weigel came up with these. Thing, things like, I'm getting full already. I really need to slow down when you're offered more. Or, oh my goodness, I saw XYZ dessert. And I, I really don't want to get full before I have an opportunity to eat that. It just looks amazing. And I wouldn't want to miss that, that, you know, famous thing that you made that looks so good right now. Exactly. And I think another thing for me that we have not talked about, look, I have things to add to this. Oh, look at that. And, is try to move away from the food. I know we're all together for the food yeah. and love and blah, 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 exactly. Blah, blah. But we're here for the food, but try to do as many things as possible that are not food related. Whether it's going for a seasonal walk in the morning before you start cooking or between courses suggesting going and looking at the holiday lights as a family or something yeah. like that. 
take some time to get in some activity. You can also, and we've talked about this before, because apparently we're 90 years old and we like where there's candy, is, <laughs> is doing puzzles or games or a holiday project, you know, making uh, snowflakes, paper snowflakes or wreaths or something like that. Paper Source has a ton of crafts that you can do with family. Absolutely. And really making things that are not food-based to fill the time can really help not only build precious memories, but also just keeps you away from those food centric. Like how the heck are you going to eat fondue when you have glue on your hands because you're making a delightful craft? Yeah. And look, this can be dangerous because I know I used to eat a lot of snacks, but even, you know, if you're a family who plays board games or you used to be or card games or, or, you know, something like that, or even just suggest, you know, holiday movies. If you have any control over what's going on, you can suggest a holiday movie that doesn't necessarily revolve entirely around food at the gathering. If you have any say or, or control over what is going to happen at said gathering, trying to steer it away from, from food entirely is a great idea. Or just, you know, like Catherine said, walking around to look at holiday lights, even going for a drive. If you know someplace that that's around, like we've got some areas around us that have, you know, holiday light displays that people drive from all over to see, um, you know, suggest that you go and that, that, you know, not only builds bonds and memories, but, you know, eats up a chunk of time where you don't have access to, to all of the eating. And a couple of super quick bonus uh, tips on the food side, leftovers. Uh, there are a couple of things that you can do with this. Speaking of pretending to like the food, yeah, you can always say, oh my gosh, I really want to enjoy this on its own, can I take some of it home? And then, as you're driving away from the house, throw it out the window onto the neighbor's <laughs> lawn. <laughs> exactly. No, in your nearest local trash receptacle. Yes, your actual official receptacle. But, like, take it home, but don't actually take it home. Throw it in the trash. It is really is the thought that counts. And as long as people are left with feeling like they are appreciated, I think that matters. But also that bit of honesty really does matter. And like Donald said earlier in the podcast, at what point in your life do you get to finally be assertive? Yeah. When we're not like, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings or that, that. like. What age is it magically when you're 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, you finally get to say what you want and what you don't like? Yeah. Because I don't want, I'm not really interested in waiting another 40 years for me to be in a position that my grandmother is. She's 97 years old. Do you right. think this is the year she's like, I'm telling everybody what I think now? Yeah, like, yeah, no, she started a while ago. <laughs> no, yeah, no, she did that. But no, actually, she's 98 now. Yeah, so, so that's right. She's 40. Yeah. But like, when are you going to start asserting yourself? You become the kind of person you want to be by doing the things that person does. And the more we can be proactive in our planning, and I used the P word in an earlier episode for Thanksgiving. Yeah. When you plan, when you have policies, when you just tell people quietly what your goals are, what you want. The more you flex that muscle, the easier it becomes. And we can also do, because we do have those family members or people who are sensitive who really do take their food personally and will be offended, use one of those other tips and tricks that we talked about to just pass through the situation without regret. Because if we don't start standing up for ourselves, we are going to find ourselves in two weeks time in January, wondering how we gained five pounds, how we yeah. gained 10 pounds, and also dreading the next holiday because they're just going to do it again. The more we can take control now, the easier it will be for upcoming holidays. So take responsibility now, take something from this episode and use it this holiday season to really enjoy the season because when we're passed out literally on the floor too full, that's not super duper joyful and the no. kids start writing on your face and in in, uh, in in sharpie because you fell asleep they i remember having to literally like like sit on the couch and undo oh, my belt because i felt so full i was so gross and this is how i thought i was celebrating the holidays instead of instead of actually making like good choices exactly so thank you so much for making good choices by listening to this episode of this podcast. We are grateful to each and every one of you. And um, I know 
that if you are listening to this right now at this time of year that you've you're in the right direction your head is in the game you're um, a wolt all-star you're a wolt all-star exactly and if you are listening to this at some later date you are still a wolt all-star <laughs> and this will help you during the next holiday season thank you so much all of our episodes are available wherever you found this one on all of the major podcast platforms and also on our website anytime we only look thin.com. And if you are at we only look thin.com, you can click on that link for join our support group to find out more about Wolt Place, We Only Look Thin Place. Oh, yeah. Our Facebook based accountability group for women. We are not a weight loss plan, but we are a place for connection, accountability, and really just so many different perspectives and insights on many different plans. We have people doing Weight Watchers, tracking calories, intuitive eating. Uh, intermittent fasting. We have Zoom meetings, habit challenges, check-ins, and it's just a great place to stay present in your health goals while you're navigating all of the uh, battles of the holiday season. So (laughs) we have uh, two subscription options, a monthly option with a three-day complimentary trial and a three-month subscription with a seven-day complimentary trial to see if Wolt Place is right for you. And why don't you, you know, uh, take advantage of this group and, you know, go into battle with some other like-minded women behind you who uh, who are going through the same things as you and can give you support during this time. Yep. So check it out. Also, if you'd like to interact with us in other ways, you can find us on social media at uh, We Only Look Thin on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or you can send us an email. Uh, we love episode suggestions and questions. We've turned many listener questions into episodes. And uh, we enjoy hearing compliments from you. And you can send all of those to weonlylookthin at gmail.com. And if you want to pass on additional compliments, you can head over to Apple Podcast and leave us a rating and a review. It really does help us know that what we're doing is making a difference. And it also helps all of the outer space algorithms. That's yeah. right. They're from outer space. They sure are. Uh, it helps the algorithms pull together when other people are looking for or helpful and inspirational podcasts like ours. So take a couple of minutes and leave us a review. We would really appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that the entire goal of the space program was <laughs> simply to get people to listen to more podcasts. Yeah. That was really what they did. Um, also, another thing you could do that would help us out and help others out in your lives would be to tell them about our show. If you know somebody who might get something out of it, Um, uh, You don't have to be aggressive about it, but you certainly could be aggressive about it. Uh, Mention our show. Tell them that uh, they may get something out of it. Or if you're in an online group and, uh, you know, it comes up, people looking for suggestions and uh, or a podcast similar to ours, uh, we would appreciate a shout out and uh, we would be grateful. So if you're still astonished that we were able to bring up Dean Martin and ceramic calzones in a weight loss (laughs) podcast, just remember that Donald and I are... An inspiration. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program. Because, baby, it's Walt outside. <laughs>